Good, good morning. This is the tour of love and we have a very special show that we are doing today to honor the wish man, Frank Shankwitz. You're going to be visiting with many friends and colleagues, wish kids, wish parents, people that have known Frank over many, many years. And our organization and the tour of love is here because of the fact that he meant a lot to us too, as he did many nonprofits throughout the world. He supported us, he helped us, he mentored us, and he let us know when he believed in us. And that meant everything, he showed up. And so want to uh, say welcome to all that are here right now. You have right now on the screen with me, we have our senior ambassador for Chemo Buddy for Life, cb4l.org, Carol Brown Battersons. Thank you for being with us. We have Bo, also known as Skip Thomas. He is our board member over digital platforms. Welcome, Bo. And we have Steph. Stephanie is, well, she was Frank's right hand person. Took care oh. of him. Was there, uh, you know, as I have, as I've been pulling pictures and stuff, kind of a partner in crime at times. Uh, made sure he got where he needed to go. Made sure things were done. I remember seeing Stephanie at events, and kind of like, okay, let's go, let's do, you know, and helping to usher him and make sure he was on top of things and had the most up, utmost respect for you and i'm grateful you're here with us today to honor frank thank you for having me you're yeah. welcome you're thank welcome you and in fact as as i did the study in regards to how it is that you ended up with him that was a different story i know gosh i was thinking about that i'm all the way up until the oh. end honestly i mean it's, it's uh it's i'm a small town girl i mean i'm population 200 and you know it just so happened that we met at a conference and and i'm not one to go and hang out with the speakers or go out for dinner i'm kind of my own i'll just do my own thing and i just go back to the hotel and and he's the same way he's very grounded like i am and and he was at the bar and we were i was eating dinner and having a Bud Light and he came and took his hat to me and we were at, we were speaking at the same conference and but I'd never seen him there. It was weird. And so when he's like, oh I'm Frank, I'm retired homicide detective and I'm like, great, I was law enforcement too. Um and then he's like I creator and founder of Make a Wish and I'm like, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like down here Googling I'm like founder make a wish. You know and like <laughs> It was him. And so, I mean, we sat for hours and hours and just talked and, and we were inseparable from that moment. And like I said, all the way up until the end, just a couple of days ago, even, I mean, a couple of days a week where we'd always talk and, you know, it just, it's, I cannot believe that this has happened. I mean, I just, he would always assure me if things were not going to be okay. Like I just knew him like the back of my hand. I knew when he was sad. I knew when he was going to cry. I knew when he was mad. I knew when you don't talk to him. Uh, I just, I knew there was just, it would always make me feel like there was some kind of, I didn't have to worry. And, and he didn't want me to come down there because he knew that he'd be in trouble if I'm coming down. And, you know, even Kitty, she's like, Slap, you, you got to talk to him. Like you got to. And so I, get on and I'd start talking to him and I'm like, Frank, you know, what's going on? I'm don't make me come down there. And, and he, you know, he, his last words were love you mean it. And like, he just, you know, he's so he, I can't even tell you, I mean, I have so many stories, so, and I'm happy to share all of them. If well, I can. awesome. And I do want to let someone know that's in our green room um, season. I see that you're here. However, uh, I, your camera is not turned on. And I, oh, okay, awesome. You know, I'm here. And I want to introduce, we're going to have over the next, we're, we're actually going to be live. And uh, I want to say thank you to the E360 TV platform and family 
because I contacted them. I let them know we were doing that special show. And I said, you know, I want to be able to tell the story and I want to be able to honor those people that right now want to honor a man that did something huge. And they were like, go for it. And, and however long we need to be, you know, we're on, we're on. And uh, we're going to have people coming in and out. And I want to recognize that one of our co-hosts right below me right now, um, Michelle, Michelle is here with us. And I want to say thank you, Michelle, for being here. And she had to literally, uh, you know, travel through the storm, the snow, to, you know, she's in Colorado. So uh, she did get uh, to where she is right now. And I'm glad that you're there safely. And then we have Season. Season and, uh, she was one of the, um, she's one of the mothers of Wish Kid and also worked with St. Jude's and one of the speakers there and um, worked with a lot of the kids, the Wish Kids, the kids uh, there in the location. So, so again, pictures. I, 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 I have a bunch of them and I have to say some of them are so incredibly fun. Yet when we look at this one here, the iconic picture of really what started the whole thing recently, or it looked like recently, but not long ago, you and Frank actually went to the grave, didn't you? Yeah, it was in 2018. I had him here in Iowa um, on a speaking um, engagement. And, and prior, it was Veterans Day, actually, um, that I had went. But I was surprised in him. This is on his bucket list. So, I mean, we did things like that, too. I wanted to check as much off as I could on his bucket list. And he was the same way with me. Um, you know, I've never seen a waterfall. And if we were traveling somewhere, we'd make time to go to a waterfall because I just love them, you know. Um, and so it, in November, I had went and I did my little investigation and found out where Chris was located in Kiwani, which is about an hour, 15 minutes away from me. And um, and I, I went there and cleaned up the grave and you know, brought flowers and stuff. And I and I took photos and and I sent it to him on Veterans Day because obviously he's a vet. And I was like, hey boss, guess who I found or who I'm with today? And um, he just, he teared up, he choked up, he was bawling. He's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe like, you know, there he is. And, and so I knew when he was coming in January or February that um, I didn't know if there was going to be snow and there's a good possibility in Iowa um, if I would be able to locate him otherwise. So that's why I went a couple months prior to see and Mark that knew where I was going. And so I did. We we went there um, before we had a TV interview and and it had snowed. I mean, it was covered in snow. Um, and then I just I went back again. I usually go every Veterans Day. And, and I just went this last November um, with my daughter and she knows the story. I mean, she's 11 and she, she loves Frank and, but she had never been to see the actual whole reason why Make-A-Wish was started. And, and so yes. her and I went and we took more photos and, and I sent it to him and he's like, super, oh my gosh, you know, and he just, it just lights him up and, and you can see that in the video. Well, yes, and I have the video. So let's watch this clip of the experience in the snow. Wait for some more people to get in here. Um, I have some really, really awesome news. Um, I'm currently with Frank. Um, he's here in Iowa. And with the bad weather that we're going to be getting here in the next uh, 24 hours, um, we decided to come visit Chris, um, the seven-year-old boy that inspired him to start the foundation in Kiwani after um, 37 years. So this is the first time that Frank has been back um, to the burial where it inspired him to create the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So um, after some digging and cold freezing, um, I did find him, and um, I just want you all to see for the first time after almost 38 years, the man himself, shall I say. Let's see if I can turn this around. Okay, here he is. Hey, you all. 
emotional here. Um, almost 39 years later, that we buried this little boy who was the inspiration to start the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And we're in Kewanee, Illinois, and, and uh, it's so amazing. There are Illinois State Troopers that were coming over here. We were kind of lost. And this is in 1980. And they led us to the cemetery. They led us to the funeral home. And they helped us with a full police funeral honoring this little boy, the first and only honorary state trooper in the history of the Arizona Highway Patrol, uh, Patrolman Christopher James Gracious. And it's just real emotional for me to visit this as we help bury this little boy. And his dream was to be a motorcycle officer, and we made that come true. Oh, he brought so the wings. So we're putting the wings and our patch, and just that as a reminder. And I'm sure now he would have been promoted to a detective. <laughs> so that's why I For picked sure. the detective badge here. But, uh, wow, it's, just, been, it's just, been a long time. Uh, I want to salute my little trooper. Thank you so much for what you've done to the children. Uh, over 415,000 children have wishes because of this young boy right here. Everybody? Yeah, that's amazing. All right, well, it's freezing here. Um, he will be um, speaking at the Wild Rose on Sunday at 3 o'clock from 3 to 5, so if you can, get in and listen to a story. Clearly it's, uh, it's amazing. So he's, he's really taking it all in. It took me almost falling on my butt to find him. <laughs> but we did, before the snow comes. That's for sure. Yes, sir. I can take some for you. Uh, we're heading to uh, be on Paula Sands Live, so listen in if you guys can around 3.30. And we'll see you then. We'll see you Sunday. Thanks for listening and sharing this moment with us, huh? Yeah, it's exciting. Bye. The interaction between the two of you was as precious as watching him you know they're honoring chris yeah you know um on the way i'll never forget this and it's one of those moments that'll stick with me forever is is driving to Lonnie and we're driving to you know davenport to be on the tv show and and it was quiet you know and he just he grabbed my hand and just held it and he just with sincere as you can get and just said thank you and it's just something I'll never forget and it, it had been a lot to him to be there so I mean he hadn't been back since he buried him you know and it just it was even though studying pictures really lightened him up but just being there and and getting to experience that because he didn't think he'd ever get to go back there and see him and so I was able to do that for him which was a highlight of me so huge huge how long had you been working with him by then um i started working with him in 2016 and um so a couple like maybe a year and a half when i went there uh, at that time and even though well i never not not worked for him I always, I mean, once a team, always a team. We've always been that way. Once a partner, always a partner. Um, and it just, yeah. And we talked every, at least three times a week, even like now, like I said, up until he couldn't. And, um, you know, then I had Kitty. I, I still have Kitty. And her and I are very, very close and through all of it. And and I don't, I'm, I call her mama. Like, She's my mom. I love her. And so, yeah, we have a couple of years by then, but that's just the first of many, you know, of our adventures. Oh, yes. I, I, the, <laughs> there's one picture in here, and I know that you guys have some questions, too, and I would love for you guys to jump in, but I'm going to grab one 
here that is just abs absolutely like stellar. And I'm trying to find it. Uh, well, I thought I had it. Um, there's one where it looked like you were going after him with like a. a oh my gosh, that was his favorite photo of us. Uh, okay, uh, I have to. I'll find it and then I yeah. will. I will share it here soon. It's one where he. I took. Well, I'm telling you, I kept saying, I, "Boss, I'm going to put you in a bubble because anytime." We were going out of town or we were traveling. He either had fallen, he was in a, on, with a cane, or he was on a motorized bike trying to run people over in hotel rooms. And I'm like, what am I going to do with you? Like, stop being hurt. Like, gosh, you're just so impressive. You know, he's fragile. And so, uh, he, yeah, he. that's when he... <laughs> he, oh gosh, we were getting in the elevator to go down to the red carpet. And... Oh, I was in front of him, and so was Andrew at the time, and Kitty and him were behind us, and he ran right into the elevator. Like, he didn't stop. I'm like, you are not on a motorcycle right now. Like, you can't just hit the door. Like, he tried to run me over. I just know he did. But so, yeah, so, like, if he had his cane, he always loved our little photo entourages that we had to do and and i i'd go up and i'm like i'm gonna just beat you you know like you better listen to me because i'm gonna beat you and so like people would catch that on camera and oh he just loved that photo or ones that i'm just looking at i'm like you better just stop like don't well i'm gonna i'm gonna capture i'm gonna find that one picture and, yeah. and get it so that we can share it and um i would love okay so uh Season. Season is the mother of a uh, make a wish child. However, much more than that. Season, why don't you introduce yourself? Love to have you, uh, you know, uh, share some thoughts here. Absolutely. Yeah. So we are a wish family. And so for me to meet Frank was just such an absolute honor. It truly was. I mean, I was, I had gone to a event and I am, you know, a cancer warrior mama and I was speaking at an event and I was sitting next to this wonderful actor and he's with an Aussie accent and he started telling me the next project he was going to be working on and it was Wishman. And he was explaining how Frank had written his autobiography and his wish was to have his life made into a movie. And all of these amazing people who I now know, you know, helped to produce the movie. And, um, but I just, you know, to me, I mean, that was so touching, but you know, it was, it was so important for me that, to tell him what an absolute, you know, it was such an amazing thing for us to be able to go on our wish trip. For us, that was a turning point where we really felt so much hope and could really feel like we can, you know, we can enjoy the future and we can really start concentrating on the future. And this is my daughter who is a brain cancer survivor. And <laughs> we were probably a year, maybe a year and a half out of treatment right here in this picture when we were on our Disney cruise. And we got to do the most incredible things. We got to swim with dolphins. We got to just absolutely enjoy each other's company and forget about just all of the stress and the worry and everything our family had been going through for the last year and a half. And it could not have been a more beautiful time together. Um, when I asked my children, we've been on beautiful, amazing family vacations and they all say the Disney cruise and our, our wish was that they made it magic. They made it magic. And so for me to be able to express just, I, I, I never thought that I would meet Frank, but I would love to tell Andrew that, you know, what an amazing experience that was and to please pass along our love to him when he met him or when he saw him again. And he said he absolutely would. So not very many months later, I brought my daughters to another event I was speaking at. And we, I, we, were, we have a charity ourselves called Cats and Hair from Kids Who Care. And they were honoring different charities. And Frank was one of, he was the, one of the main people they were honoring. And they were honoring our charity as well. So I brought my two daughters so I could speak about my daughter when we, they introduced our charity. And so we got to meet Frank. And he was just as wonderful as you would expect him to be. And I remember him letting um, our daughter try on his hat 
You told us oh, that's, yes. really, you know, that's safe for the wish kids. <laughs> Always with that. Always I love that so much. And it was really wonderful. Yeah. You know, that's the thing you run into. I mean, I've met so many wish kids and, and, and I've been, geez, blessed to not hear very many bad stories or, you know, it just, it, it's even with them being little and growing up and they're adults now. And the only thing like they can ever talk about is how they'll always remember their wish trip or their wish. And, and so it was fun to watch Frank interact with, with them and, and always ask, you know, what was your wish and what, you know, what you do. And, and, you know, it's just, Disney was such a huge part of make a wish and it still very much is. And, you know, every kid wants to go to Disney and oh, that's amazing. Yeah, they have the, they have the whole cancer part now where it's all just for, you know, wish kids and. So incredible. Yeah. It's the weird. thing about Frank too that I thought when we were in front of him, you know, he just made her his world, you know, he really concentrated on that the one person in front of him. And he was so yeah. wonderful with that. I just saw that this morning, Tamara, how they honored Frank and I put that on my page. Yeah. Thank you so much. He always sent me one of those on my birthday. Yeah you know, happy birthday, 78 from Mickey and the gang. And it was, awesome. it was on there. And so I seen that this morning too. And I just, and I haven't really been on Facebook much just because I trying to gather everything and, and just try to not, my heart will never be full again. I mean, it's just, I'm trying to find that medium that hat, like where I can be comfortable and, obviously carry on his legacy as much as he would want me to and and trust me to do so and and i'm grateful for that but as i haven't been on facebook much but i did pop on today because i was gonna check a couple things out and and i got on his page and just kind of went through everything and and i realized that he did post that video of him and i there not too not too long ago on the 12th i think of january and yeah. when any of the memories popped up, he'd always send them to me or, you know, or post them. And yeah, it was special. And I want to say that Chuck, who does these, yeah, he actually gave us permission. He's aware of the show today. He's aware of the, the, um, the fact that we are honoring him. And his words were that he is deeply touched by this also by you know and wants to share the tribute and share his love for such a great man so i asked him how did he get associated with him in the very beginning and he said that he was frank reached out and fronted him <laughs> and, then, and from there you know the history was created and again you know that that heart and that person that would just be right there with you one way or another and chuck who doesn't go on camera or any of those kind of things i offered and he said no thank you however he had a really special relationship with him. He really 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 did so chuck that one's for you and uh Speaking of wish kids, we have one that did send in, he's now a young adult and he sent in his thoughts. Hi, I'm Brett. Um, when I was 15, I was able to be given a Make-A-Wish uh, this was an important moment because not only had I just gone through a very tough year of going through chemo, but it was also very strenuous on my family. And for my wish, we were able to, they were able to take me and my entire family, my mom, my two sisters and I, to Florida. Um, and we were able to go play with monkeys. We went to a water park, we stayed at a hotel on the beach. We were able to really reconnect as a family. And I think this was something that we needed to be able to kind of let go of everything that had just happened to all of us and kind of regroup as a family and be able to start life brand new. Um, this is really hard because today 
I learned that Frank had passed away. Um, I was given the opportunity to meet Frank and he, in the short time that I got to meet him, he was very welcoming, very kind, and you could tell he's a very strong man, um, like strong-willed. And his movie shows just that. Um, he's changed so many lives and he's been able to help give back to a whole bunch of families that have gone through the end of the world and come back. Uh, he really did some good here on Earth and I'm really heartbroken to hear that he's gone, but I'm really glad for the time that I got to meet him and I don't really know to be honest, he just, it, it really was a great experience to be able to meet the man that is the reason why my family got to go and have that amazing experience together. So thank you, Frank, and I hope you're having a great time in heaven. <laughs>
that video totally got me. Um, but it's not just the cancer child or the child with you know a life-threatening disease. It is the whole family and the siblings go through it too. So that joy on my son's face, you know, it was that was probably the first time that he got to smile like that for a year and a half, worried about his sister. So we could not be more grateful to Frank and what he gave our family and what he gave to the world. And I know the you and I talked about that our first thought was sadness, and then our next thought was the line and line and line of little um, warriors that are angel warriors now that are lining up to welcome him home. And there's very few people who probably got the reception that Frank did. Make a Wish Club at my school. This is Cameron, one of our uh, junior service heroes. Cameron, glad you're here with us. It's such a special program. Make a Wish is a good program. Absolutely, it is. And he is a high school uh, student. For your your knowledge, um, Stephanie, and and uh, thank you for sharing that, Cameron, and uh, Carol. You are a senior ambassador for our program and our program, I don't know if you're aware, um, Stephanie, exactly what it is that we do. We support those people affected by cancer, both the patient and those people that love and support them, adults and um, through buddies, you know, and, and so we, our whole premise is that no one should face cancer alone. And that was, and I, I, I met, I actually met Frank a while ago and then we kept seeing each other and he would talk to me and everything. And then finally he was ready. It was like, finally. So he looked at me one time and he's like, okay, don't you have a question to ask me? <laughs> so I did. I finally did. I'm like, would you consider? And he was like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because he, he knew then, you know, he had been watching, he had been seeing what it is that we were all about and that we were a real deal, you know, that we were actually up there serving the community. And Carol is one of our senior ambassadors for the Buddies program. And we had, we had a, um, the day that we found out that he had passed in our closed group, we, we all got together because Quite honestly, I could barely see because I was just, you know, it was a really tough night. And Carol came on with with me and many others were there and they hadn't seen the Wishman movie. Now they have and they all have. They were all like and from they knew who he was, but they didn't know the movie. Now, what would you say, Carol? Because so many now have been coming to us and saying how what they feel. What what was your thought? Wow, um, the first time I watched it was yesterday, actually, and um, it was an incredible movie about his life. Um, I really didn't understand when Tamara says, "When you watch the movie, you understand about the cowboy hat," and I didn't understand it until I started watching the movie, and when they showed the part where his mom was forcing him into the car and his hat got left behind in the dog and he kept screaming my hat the dog let me out you know and um i didn't understand until i started further further on watching the movie to where the hat came into play and how he received the hat and um the man is incredible for what he's gone through in his life and for what um, he stands for and his legacy will go on because there's so many people that love this man for what he has done, what he has created and where he's come from. Yeah. Um, and my biggest movie in, that, in that movie, how did you get so tall? Because of chocolate. Chocolate, yeah. <laughs> um, that movie, I'll tell you, I mean, from I was with him from start to finish on that one. I mean, talk about, and that's when he started having his heart problems. And I mean, he, he's stubborn and ah, he just wouldn't, he waits to the last minute, I, I swear. Um, when we first watched the movie together, obviously 
being watching it being filmed and then actually watching it on the big screen are two different things. Like making a movie is extremely boring and a lot of work and retakes and retakes and different angles and retakes. And, and I'm not Hollywood. I don't like to be on camera. I don't like a lot of, and he doesn't really either, but it's, he's like, you're going to be in the movie. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to be somebody. I'm not like Frank, duh, you know, and like, <laughs> We're going to be an extra in the movie. And I was like, all right, I, I don't argue, I'm not going to argue with you. But um, so when we actually sat down and watched a private screening of the movie actually come to life and knowing as much as I know about him and what is really uh, men are not emotional. Frank is tough. I'm tough, you know, but he's a, he's a kid at heart and, and so I knew I lost it. There was this one part in the movie that I just knew was going to crush him too, because it really did. It, it, it was extremely emotional for him. Uh, just with even talking about it, but to see it come to life, I couldn't even be in the room. I had to leave. It's when his, when he finally sees his dad or realizes his dad's back and, and he's choking up and choking up and bawling. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta leave. I, I left, I went outside and I just bawled. And it wasn't so much of, I just knew how much that hurt him. And just so it, it just, it, that, that just killed me. I mean, and so I obviously watched it a hundred thousand times, but even having it in my possession and I could watch it anytime, I just, I can't, um, especially now because, you know, it, I never would have got to experience that. And he certainly wasn't expecting anything like that to come to life. And when it did, it, it just, he was so proud of, so proud of it. And, and he, he, I don't know, it's just, he doesn't ask for much ever. He don't ask for anything ever. And so when this was given to him, he just, you know, he was so grateful. And I'm telling like a lot of that movie is, I mean, it's Frank. Most I'm getting killed and hit by a drunk driver, and you know when he goes to these conferences, and I can, I could do a speech verbatim. You know, verbatim. I know everything that he's going to say. I know when people are going to laugh. I know when people are going to cry. Um, and he always brought humor into anything that was tragic. And so, like when he did get killed by a drunk driver, um, and having the nurse bring him back to life, and when he opens his eyes, he sees this big, blonde, beautiful thinking, oh, if this is heaven, then, you know, I'm, I'm good, you know, yeah. like, oh, Frank, <laughs> such a ladies man, <laughs> beat him up. You know, he, and I, I will say I have, and I think a few of us have seen him on stage many times, and yes, that was always one of the things, in fact, when I see the movie every single time, I hear his him on stage talking about you know opening you know, like when you're, you're filling the hair first you know like, filling it and then seeing it. the blonde yeah uh huh <laughs> you know when he's like uh, did anybody ever see the TV show Chips and then if people are like oh yeah and they're like oh you're showing your age you know like you just throw that in there <laughs> and um, you know it's just and I knew the when people would just ball is obviously when he pinned the wings on Chris and he came out of the coma and then he tells everybody that he likes to think that those wings helped him, you know, go to heaven. And, and now knowing that Frank's in heaven, it's just. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. Above you right now is Poe. Poe is how we introduced him, but his name is Skip Thomas and he's actually a filmmaker. Uh, documentaries, won an Emmy oh, and, and um, done all of that. And yet he, he also, I'm sure he'll be telling you, he totally gets what you're talking about because where he's at, he's in a log ca cabin right now and, you know, in, in the backwoods of Arkansas. So, you know, uh, you talk about a small town kind of person, yeah. you know. So, Skip, when you were hearing um, Stephanie and Steph talk about everything what was going through your mind in regards to because you're a storyteller that's what he is that's 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 what he does and 
And the process versus story versus the heart and versus where we're go where we are all at today, honoring the man. Hmm. Well, thank you, and and glad to be here with all of you. And yeah, it's um, and a cancer survivor now of ten and a half years. Um, and you know, this is a you know, the graphic below says the tour of love. Um, if you can't feel the love for everybody that's watching here, the you know this is there's so much love uh, for this man, for the mission, um, and, and the people that have touched you know lives have been touched and changed and better because of it. And those people go out like a ripple, you know, in a in a, in a, in a lake when you throw a, a, a pedal. How many lives have been touched? Not just by him, but by what he started in the movement with all of you and the stories and, and witnessing. Um, you know, we're all better people because of some of the people that we meet, certainly with all of y'all. Um, you know, it reminds me of really my time working in film, which it's, it is, boring is a polite word uh, to say about it. It's brutal. Um, and you know, it is brutally painful at times. Um, but you, you know, but you're a vehicle, you're not the mind of the camera, you are a conduit, uh, to hopefully capture the spirit of something that is beautiful and and be a you know, a vehicle to, to transfer that to an audience. Um, and that is, is really the, the, the you know, the mission and the integrity in filmmaking rather than being something that you've, you've engineered and fabricated and hopefully the spirit of something is, um, is strong enough that you, uh, you, you allow it to flow and certainly in this case it, it, is, it is. What it reminds me of, you know, hundreds and hundreds of little films I've done on cancer and especially with kids. Um, over my career, which is long and over what, 40 years, 35 or 40 years. Um, and with cancer organizations um, here in Arkansas and around with um, um, a, a group that was a radiation therapy that, that basically every year, although I did lots of commercials and videos and education, I, every year we'd take kids, these kids with cancer too, on a trip. And we take them to Disney World or to Sea World or Chicago every year. And I'd volunteer, and I usually take my kids with me to participate. And I'd always, of course, take a camera, and I'd interview these kids. And um, and then working some, I got to visit Paul Newman back when he did Hole in the Wall. And he, you know, he it was like these kids are, are that have cancer. He wanted them to have an opportunity to go through medical treatment, but do it on a camp and and where kids could be kids. What that means, and hearing Stephanie talk about how important that is in this time, and the interviews, hundreds of interviews I did with kids, and the videos I've done, um, it, it's you know it's it's amazing how important and how valuable this is in this movement. Just like what you're doing, Tamara, with this group, uh, you're changing lives. People become better people, and they find a flame of a purpose in life. Um, that is um, that they jump on board and and make a difference in this world. So it um, it was really hard for me ten years ago because I always did films about cancer and kids with cancer and people and treat and and healing and and suddenly I'm told I have cancer and that rocked my world. My prognosis wasn't good, um, but I had to look at what the gift was in it, uh, even if I wasn't going to make it. And when I hear, you know you guys talk about him and the uh, amazing difference in so many people's lives. Um, what amazing gifts are, are not left behind, but, but they're, they're in all of you to give someone else and, and pass along. I mean, Lou Holtz, once the coach once was asked, said, my gosh, what a legacy you've left and all the things you've done. You must be proud. He goes, no, the legacy is not about me. The legacy lives on in the people that I touched. And that's, it's their legacy. It's all of y'all's legacy. So, um, yeah. yeah, I'm just thrilled to be part of this. And thank you all for um, your love and honoring for those that are watching. Uh, what a gift to the world this is. So thank you. Yeah. I want you to know that we have some clips, quite a few actually, that have been sent in too from friends and uh, people that have known him, have been there with him, and how 
the love you talk about tour of love the love the love that is just absolutely flowing from so many and i want to be able to share them with everyone publicly for frank to hear and see you know and and his family and all of the wish all of the people that are involved with make a wish and all of you out there because the the thing about frank too is that he let you know that you too can do this you too it it you are a hero everyone is a hero mm -hmm. You can do it. He was so inclusive. Right. So inclusive. The hat. You know, it's like, okay, you can do it too. You can too. And I will tell you, I was there with Brett when when Brett had his time with Frank. And in fact, you were around the corner that day, I remember. <laughs> and um uh, and Yet he was looking straight at him and 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 let him know once a wish kid, always a wish kid, no matter what age yeah. you are. It made him feel so incredibly empowered, asked about him, asked what he was doing, asked where he was going, and you know, kind of like a cheerleader. And you you put that into what almost 500,000 wish kids that have now been granted wishes and then you multiply that out by the families that we are talking millions of people right now one way or another are feeling the love for this man and so this is just a very small ripple in the pond but each and every one of these clips and thoughts are truly thoughts of love What is great about Frank? Everybody has a special story about Frank. Something inside him that touched something inside of them. And that is something that we will all carry for the rest of our lives. Frank, we love you. We will always love you. You are an amazing man. Then you're an amazing man now. And you'll continue touching the lives of people, even though you are gone. We love you. Hi, it's Michelle Milo here, and it's my absolute honor to be asked to say a little something about my friend, Frank Shankowitz. I can't believe in my heart breaks that I'm not going to see him at any of the events that we shared together with so many of our friends. Secret Knock, City Gala, and just all in between. He was always that smile in the room, the brightness that you knew you always had a friend, especially if you were new and you didn't have anyone, you always had Frank. And I, I hate to live life with any regrets, but the one regret I had is that he will no longer be able to meet me at the snow camp on Route 66, which we had planned to do so he could show me his old haunts. And I will never forget the time when we were speaking and I was <laughs> slated to speak after Frank. And everyone knows Frank on stage. He's amazing, funny, and just absolutely heartfelt. So. With that, I want to say thank you so much. We'll miss you. We love you. And we're just so glad that your wish kids will have an angel with them and God. Thank you. It's February 21st, 2021, and I'm watching the movie Wish Man. I'm watching the movie, and, and as I'm stopping and pausing it to, to take a moment and record this video, it's the it's the exact portion or exact moment when Kitty asked Frank if he would be willing to go and see that little boy, Michael. It's all about that purpose. It's all about that meaning of life. And I know with many, 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 many condolences that the, the multitude of people feel today because of the loss of Frank we also realize that we get to carry something forward. We get to continue creating legacies and changing and making a difference in the world. So my love goes out to Kitty and also 
the rest of the world that is mourning and yet being inspired. Oh, I know what's going on here. Okay. Um, I also have a video that I think would be very interesting to play right now. There's actually two of them in a row. And yet, Steph, I'd love to hear from you because you had to have been around now that I know when you started working with them when Andrew was was found. And um, would you like to share any of that? Because it's kind of interesting, the story, the backstory. Yeah, so gosh, let's see. I think they were at an event, I think maybe Secret Knock. Um, and he is obviously Australian and had been an actor. He was like Superman or something in Australia. And Frank was like, well, we're doing a movie about me. Why don't you like audition? And, and he's Australian, so he's got the Aussie voice, you know? And so it's like he, to get over that and talk normal, like us, like we don't have accents, to get rid of that accent, he worked really hard. He went to like voice lessons and, and then he, gosh, he still has it. Like he'll talk normal. And then you could catch him a few times in the movie kind of slip it up a little bit but I mean yeah and he ended up he ended up getting the part and I mean he was awesome and he worked really hard and even took like motorcycle lessons even though I would not uh, recommend him ever driving a motorcycle he didn't yeah. he jumped the motorcycle a few times <laughs> during the movie too um and he's not very good at it but he worked his butt off and him and Frank you know he wanted to know every bit of detail of Frank's life. And, and so he could do such a good job doing that role because it's, it's a hard role to play. I mean, so it's interesting. It was fun, but it's Andrew. Yeah. And, yeah, so, it's I mean, everything happens for a reason. You meet people at a point in your life that you're supposed to meet them. And, and it just so happened he bumped into Frank and, and worked out that way. Oh, <laughs> oh, me and Kitty. See, I could drive a motorcycle. <laughs> I, had a I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want Kitty on one, though. But we had fun. We had a lot of fun during. I mean, you have to. It's like I said, it's boring. Well, I have a little bit more of the backstory. So let's talk about that. Now, for those of you that haven't figured out yet, here in this poster, you can see the iconic hat. However, if you look closely enough, which it's a little further back, it's not Frank's face. It's actually Andrew's mm -hmm. because Andrew is the actor that was chosen to play Frank as an adult. So yes, a little bit of backstory. Here we go. And then we're going to hear from Andrew. Well, we've all heard of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which brings joy to critically ill children by granting them their wish. Now there's a new Hollywood film which tells the story of the American who started it all. And interestingly, the producers chose an up-and-coming Australian actor to be the star. Robert Penfold tells the story of Andrew Steele, who, after a long struggle, is having his moment of stardom. Even as a boy back home in Sydney, Andrew Steele was often asked, what do you wish for? His answer would nearly always be to be right here on a red carpet on Hollywood Boulevard. And this week that wish became a reality. My wish has been granted, my friend. And uh, yeah, I pinch myself because I might wake up at any minute. The Wish Man is the true story of Frank Shankwitz, a motorcycle cop who started the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And it shows everything that he had to go through growing up through um, you know, a traumatic childhood where he had separation from his father, his mother stole him away in a custody battle, 
and uh, you know it shows his life of service and the hardships he went through as a man to come to a point where he could give back so wholeheartedly and create something that we all know today. But before the big night, there was the prep, getting that look just right. So how's he looking? Is he, how's he going to go tonight? Oh, hey? well, well, he's already a good looking chap, so he wins either way. We're adding a great tuxedo and a pocket square and a bow tie. This is exactly what you need when you're taken to the next level, and he's doing exactly that. Andrew, like so many actors, has been working at his craft for years. There was three years at NIDA, and taking the well-trodden route through Home and Away, and winning an award for his role as Batman in that quirky comedy, Justice Lease. Where's Miranda Kerr and how does she need saving? Oh, I got lucky, I guess. Maybe you survived the accident to find the meaning of your life. It was so incredible to have you know, opportunity to be the lead actor in, in something like this where the whole production is there to support you so you can do exactly what you did the hundred times in your bedroom when you were, you know, practicing the role and to, to have it all come to fruition is a real dream come true. Living in the most competitive city in the world for actors, Andrew and his wife Kim Jackson, who's about to star in the new Disney series Triangle, have really learned to diversify. They've started up their own non-profit charity called Flicks for Change. It's an international film festival for movies with a social conscience. And they've taken on loads of small film and TV roles. And to survive, well, you've got to do what you've got to do. Uh, you know, we, um, you know, I do like kids' parties and stuff like that on the weekend. So I've got the world premiere on Tuesday night. On Sunday, I'm going to be Black Panther running around at a kids' party. Like, you know, and that's the kind of thing I've been doing for years. I've been a sports coach. Uh, you know, uh, coaching of acting. And it turned out that it was Andrew's charity that eventually got him the role. And that was because he struck up a conversation with Frank about it and an event here in Los Angeles. And he talked about his nonprofit. He didn't know we were doing a movie. And I just said, you know what, we're looking for a real good looking guy and you might qualify, but, uh, and just suggested he audition for the part, which he did several auditions. Nobody gave that to him. He worked for it and boom, they, they hired him. But playing Frank meant this Aussie had to sound like Frank. No, I never thought that I could make a difference. <laughs> he had that accent down so good. Andrew, give me a bit of Frank. Well, I'm Frank Shankwitz, 1091 Arizona Highway Patrol. How was that? <laughs> Perfect. Oh, yeah, Perfect. Yeah, yeah. In the movie, as in real life, we see how Frank made a severely ill seven-year-old boy's wish of being a motorcycle cop come true. Is that for me? Well, you are a trooper Michael Allen, aren't you? by getting him a uniform and swearing him in. The little boy died a few weeks later. And my commander said he's going to be buried in Illinois. He wants you to go and give him a full police funeral because we've lost a fellow officer, which we did. But coming home, I just started thinking, here's a boy who had a wish, and we made it happen. Why can't they do that for other children? And now, 39 years later, over half a million wishes worldwide have been granted because of the seven-year-old boy. Frank Shankwitz. The Make-A-Wish Foundation, Andrew Steele, and now this film, all carrying the same message. Everyone can do something to help someone to make a difference. A simple act of kindness can have a ripple effect. We can help other kids one wish at a time. Now, if I can do it, anyone can be a hero. Hi, Tamara, and everyone who's watching. Um, sorry, I couldn't be live on the call uh, currently in Australia, but I wanted to send a message um, because Frank has changed my life for the better uh, in so many ways. It's incredible um, what one man can do for my life, but also for hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people around the world. Um, and we know him through Make-A-Wish, um, but you know, having been in the military, uh, being a, a policeman, the Arizona Highway Patrol for, you know, decades, literally, uh, as a detective and a, and a highway patrolman, um, every day he is impacting people's lives and his heart and his uh, generosity and his kindness, his understanding, his charisma and charm and sense of humor all things that we're all going to miss about him. Um, personally, I'll be telling kids of the stories that he told me of when he was undercover. Um, but then from going from that, from rolling in the dirt under 
you know, every day he'd roll in the dirt so he looked like he was a bikey. Um, going from that to going to children's bedsides that are terminally ill and wishing them, granting them wishes that that would not have happened had, had he not had an idea of complete service. And that's his whole life was all about that. And um, I'm humbled to know him. And, and so, it, yeah, you know, you know, I couldn't be proud of the moment when when Frank basically okayed me to play him in his life story um, in the film Wish Man, which um, which I'm so humbled and I'm so grateful for that opportunity to to portray such an incredible person. Um, uh, I'll, uh, you know, I, I I'm so grateful to him and and to Kitty as well, and my heart goes out to her and and the rest of Frank's family and. And huge thanks to everybody that put the, the film together of Wishman, um, Greg Reed and Theo Davies, and Mark Gold and, and, and every, everybody else. That was, um, it was an amazing thing to be a part of. We knew that we were, we were working, we were making something really important. And uh, it's even more important now that Frank's passed to tell his story and um, for his legacy to grow, move on, grow on and, and um, and for the world to know what an amazing man he was, but that also that he was just one man and what amazing things can happen when you put your mind to it and, um, and you really believe wholeheartedly in helping other people. And that's, that's his whole motto of his whole life was, you know, everyone can be a hero and, um, you know, a simple act of kindness can cause a ripple effect. Um, he t tells stories of um, his mentor, Juan, who looked after him um, when he was a young boy and, and really needed guidance. And these are the lessons that, that Juan taught him. And uh, through, you know, an incredible life, um, he's really uh, brought that forward. Um, so I would like to pay tribute to Frank in a way that I've, I've done a few times before, is with the song that I wrote, um, when I, uh, when really, when I kind of just first got the role for Wishman, I, um, uh, this, this, this song is, is called, it's called Wishman, and uh, it really kind of just talks about where he's come from and, and uh, you know, where, where, he, where he is now and where his legacy is going to continue to go because he's such an incredible person and a fantastic role model and a mentor for me and, uh, and a friend that I, I will miss and I am missing. Um, so yeah, without any further ado, this is uh, Mrs. Wishman. There was a boy named Frank who had tough love to thank. His little mama drank and his daddy copped the flag. Yeah. He grew up on his own In a place to really call his home Till a man called Juan Took him under his arm This Juan truly saved his soul He said, give back little Frank Show your daddy you're a man Tell your mama that you love her too Though she left you in the cold It's not really her fault Hear the words I want to say to you you're gonna be the wish man, make a wish man. Yeah, you'll be the wish man. Just think of the kids, man, the thousands of kids, man, all getting to live their dreams. All thanks to the wish man. You're gonna be the wish man. Yeah, you'll be the wish man. Just think of the kids, man, the thousands of kids, man, and their happy families. back little friend just do all you can set the love that is in you free just give back little Frank if we all hold hands what we'll achieve you won't believe just give back little Frank show your daddy you're a man tell your mama that you love her too though she left you in the cold it's not really her fault 
Hear the words I want to say to you You're gonna be the worst man Make a worst man Yeah, you'll be the worst man Just think of the kids, man The thousands of kids, man All getting to live their dreams All thanks to the worst man You're gonna be the worst man Yeah, you'll be the worst man Just think of the kids, man The thousands of kids, man And the happy family Left you in the cold, it's not really her fault. Hear the words I want to say to you. You're gonna be the wish man, make a wish man. Yeah, you'll be the wish man. Just think of the kids, man, the thousands of kids, man. All getting to live their dreams, all thanks to the wish man. Gonna be the wish man, yeah, you'll be the wish man. Just think of the kids, man, thousands of kids, man, and their happy families. Are the wish man, the man with the vision of the Make a Wish Foundation? You don't need money to be a rich man. What is your wish, man? And Frank's wish was to have his story told and um, please spread his story far and wide. Um, I'm so lucky to have known him and. Um, his legacy will live on and my love to Kitty and his family and, and the rest of the Wishman crew and to Frank, wherever you are, big guy, um, sending you much love to the sky. So now you've got your wings now, buddy. want to say welcome to those that have joined us since we've been uh, receiving that message from Andrew there uh, down under uh, and uh, I had no idea he was going to be send sending us that original song also and I thought that that was amazing and I want to say thank you Andrew for that I want to say welcome we have two additional uh, people here to share the love, one of which Richard Gordon and Forbes Riley. Welcome to both of you. And Richard, you you were one of the ones that was there at the gate helping with that event that was just talked about by Andrew and Forbes. You were there in your beautiful roaring 20s uh yellow dress canary yellow dress i actually have that i have i think i emailed you the photos if i can share the screen of that event i have lots of pictures of frank i but love that dress on you oh it, it was really yeah. the best yeah and the shoes the shoes and the dress both Isn't that funny that you guys remember the shoes i'm sorry <laughs> i i got pretty close to andrew for a while that's a lot of bunch of pictures with him and spent time in his home and i was that's why i'm not wearing makeup because uh, it doesn't look no, good. No. Um, I would love to share those photos. You know, Frank's in this book, right? Have you guys seen this? Uh, this is the largest entrepreneurial habit book. We did it during COVID in September. There's 150 authors, and Frank was gracious enough to say yes. And uh, I have a beautiful video interview with him for about an hour and a half uh, that I will share. There we go. There's That was that beautiful night. I'd met Andrew two years before, by the way. There's another couple of pictures there. I met Andrew when he got cast. And I thought, this is never going to happen. It took two years. And so for 
Greg and all the team that put it together. And uh, I love that guy so much. Frank was there the night that um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to just burst in. I don't have a whole lot of time I have to teach today. Um, so I'll just do a minute or two here. And thank you for letting me do it live. Um, I'm an actress and a TV host. And I used to listen to all these amazing speakers like Les Brown and Tony Robbins and not a lot of girls, by the way. And I keep thinking, man, I don't know how they do it. They're so good at speaking. They, they wrap their stories around. They're, they're eloquent on stage. I always say other people's words. I don't have anything to speak about. How wonderfully crazy is that? And for years, I would just watch. This is before YouTube. This is before you could see it videotaped. I wish I had. And uh, I just kind of drooled. I, mean, I went to one of the big concerts, one of the big arenas, and I remember watching um, Kevin. Not, is it Kevin? Uh, I don't like him. He's a very conservative guy on television. Anyway, he was brilliant on stage and, oh, and a whole bunch of other people. Right. And they were like, yeah, Bill O'Reilly. And it was like, wow, he's actually that great on stage. How, how, how do I do this? Well, it was a long year of figuring it out, of people taking me under their wings. And it all ended up the end of the year at Secret Knock with Greg Reed. Not funny. This is a long time ago. And I gave us Greg invited me and he said, I'm going to get you to speak and get you to speak. I'm like, I don't even have anything to speak about, but I didn't really say that out loud. You never turned down an opportunity. And I get there and there is Frank and the guys who created Kajabi and Elvis Presley's brother and all these other people. And I'm nervous for two days. I'm like, I just, I can't breathe. Saturday night comes. I'm thinking he forgot. And sure enough, he's like, Hey, wait, we forgot one more. Before Mr. Riley come on stage. And I'm like, oh, gosh. And what Greg had arranged was to do an interview style. And he would ask me questions and let, let me go. And it's funny because he said, look at the camera. And I couldn't because there was this audience there. And Frank was in the audience, as was Ron Klein, the guy who created the credit card strip. I have, I, I did what I did. Something came through me. I told stories I never told ever out loud. I got a standing ovation. That was the only one of the entire weekend. And I, at the party afterwards, I took my phone. And Frank was one of those people who just showered all over me and Ron, actually, I just watched it yesterday, said, we watched a person like being born on stage. And Frank and I would always talk about that, about what it meant to communicate your heart. I'd worked for Make-A-Wish Forever. Uh, it was one of my favorite charities because I don't like disease charities. My mom used to work for Cancer Care and I like we actually help people now. My favorite one was we would drive cancer patients to get their medication. That seemed to be a noble cause. And when I sat down and talked to Frank about what he had done and how many lives he touched, it's otherworldly. Everybody says to me, oh, I, I just want to touch a million people. You guys have no idea, number one, that you really could, and number two, how you'd even do that. This man did that. And then I met Andrew. And can you show that picture the first night that I met Andrew? It's so sweet. These two beautiful I, I, men. I, this one was one of the ones that I have. I don't have oh. the ones that you sent out. I'm looking oh, for them still. Screen. I, can I do that? Can I share that little screen? Uh, yes. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. You see yes. Anything? We can do so, that. There we go. This was, this was the night that uh, I met Andrew. Mm -hmm. And this... Oh. This beautiful man with a ridiculous accent that sounds nothing like Frank's says, I'm going to play him. And I thought, okay. And then two years later, it still hadn't happened. And I was like, well, maybe it wasn't quite as real as I thought. Um, and then I watched how Greg fought for it. Uh, we just find another one of Frank. I, I, I send them all to you. I don't quite know. That was the evening. There's Joshua and, and Andrew. And by the way, they worked out in the gym together. And there's my beautiful man and wish man in the back. And I thought this is one of my favorite photos of all time. Just the idea that his dream got to be even bigger than him. Um, and I think I have one more in my little Frank Shankwin's collection. Oh, I have a couple of us hanging out. I, I don't know. I, some event we had done. I could go on and on. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stop sharing. How do I stop that? Uh, I do have a, I have a wonderful photo where he let me put his hat on and hanging out at lunch. Um, over the years, I would call him as a mentor because he was one of the few people who said, you know, you're good at the speaking thing. You can keep doing this. And it's hard because when your ego is not sure that you can. And when I called him and I said, look, I'm doing this book. I put 10 of my favorite celebrities in here. Would you be willing to do it? And he's like, Don, of course I'd do that for you. And I have this beautiful one-on-one uh, -on -one camera interview. 
He actually showed up a lot. He showed up at my birthday party too. All right, Adam Norton. I'm sorry. God, it's been a year of losing people. I guess I just didn't. You know, the crazy thing about losing people is that you don't get to call them anymore. It's not that we think they're in some other place and everything is wonderful. When my parents both died, they died around the same time at age 70. I was 40 years old and I lost my best friends. I still have the same phone number. And every once in a while, I call it just because, because I'm hoping they'll pick up. Then they don't. And some strange person's like, why are you calling me? And I'm like, because. And so all I want to say about Frank it's I am so blessed to have eaten meals with that man by myself who have talked to him to touch greatness. And I know he never thought that he was. He thought he was just this, this little cop who was just doing what he was supposed to be doing. There was no ego in that man. How do you get to that level and be that sweet and that giving and bless Andrew and Greg Reed and the whole crew who worked so hard. I think Wishman is one of my favorite movies. Did you guys just watch it in that audience? First of all, we got to go to a red carpet premiere like we're all somebody. Right. <laughs> cool with that, right? Because I did the red carpet in, in, in Phoenix too with him. Yeah. <sighs> and that I'm glad, I'm glad he did that because they needed that. They need that to live on. I keep thinking that movie will outlive all of us yes. as a testament to what one man, one voice, can really make a difference. So just to Frank, I'm gonna miss you, man, a lot more than I realized. And every time I see the photos and I look at your hat and I just know that even when you don't feel good, you get up and you give. Mm -hmm. That's it, Tamara, thank you for reaching out. I just, oh man. Okay, somebody else say something, I'm good. Well, thank you for being here. And thank you for sharing your heart and your love and and um, Stephanie, what would you like to say? Oh boy. <laughs> in, in regards to what, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, like Fort said, I mean, you can't, you can't put into words and in, in his selflessness and the integrity. Integrity meant everything to him. And, yes. and he taught me so much and everybody for that matter. And he didn't, like I said, he didn't ask for things. You know, he got, he would be very excited if he went to a hotel and we got upgraded to a suite, like <laughs> for it, or like first class. And, and you know, a, a few times that I got up to first class, I gave it to a vet, you know, because I don't, I don't need first class. Like you deserve it. And, and he taught me that, like, I'm, do everything for everybody else. And, you know, it just, the stories that I can tell. Well, tell us a story. Let's do this. One of the things that I was told when my dad passed away was talk about him. That's the thing that you have to and get to do is you get to talk about him because it brings up his spirit. So let's tell stories. We've got, I want to uh, welcome, we've got another one with us that has more than a story to share. She actually has a song that uh, she has also created. And um, I need to get that all queued up. So welcome, Crystal and Richard. Welcome also. Uh, and anybody that has a story, I'd love to hear. And then, Crystal, where is the link? And I'll get that set up. Um, it's on YouTube, but I'm going to try to see if I can share my screen. Okay, perfect. That's perfect. Like what Forbes just did. Wonderful. All right. Yeah, I'll go ahead and jump in in the meantime, if that's okay. Um, yes, absolutely. Like, like Forbes said, when I, when I first met Frank, it was at my good, our good friend, Greg Reed's house. And I met Frank and he was just a regular guy. And uh, we had a lot in common. And he comes across as very big, very intimidating, very serious, and like non-approachable. And as we all know, it's quite the opposite. Right. So Stephanie and I would work together sometimes. We would have to actually beat people off Frank because he didn't want to leave. We're like, the car's here. Frank, the car, the plane, the plane. Right. Yeah. And I was like, can you help me? Help me get me out of the door. But, but people didn't know that. And so at all the events, people would always approach me that didn't know him. And they'd say, hey, can you introduce me to Frank? And I was chuckling. I'm like, why? But I would. And then Frank would take it in 
immediately take their attention because people have tension meeting him of his stature. And like you say, Forbes, he's a, he's a famous guy and he didn't know that. But right away he would put people at ease, sit down, pull up a chair. He would get close to them. And then I would walk away because now the person I introduced just off of the cuff was already engaged in a conversation with Frank. He would find something in common. He would draw out the best of them. Do you want to be a speaker? What brings you here? And then he would make it about them, which is a skill we all try to teach as a coach. But Frank didn't need any teaching. He would pull out the best in everyone. And I would walk away smiling because he welcomed, especially when you introduce someone to someone, right? And we've all been there. You introduce someone and the person you introduce them to kind of fluffs them off. And you're like, wow. But Frank never did that. So now I'm walking around like a superstar. Hey, I introduced him to Frank. And they're posting pictures with the hat, Frank's arm around them. Thanks for my buddy Richard introducing me to Frank. And I'm like, hey, that's an easy introduction. Frank is the most approachable guy you could ever imagine. And he was just like the guy you love seeing at the events. You know, he's like that uncle, that buddy. You go to the event and you see the hat, you see him, you see his entourage, you see Kitty, you see Stephanie. It was a package. You love seeing them because they all had this great energy and they were there for others they were there to give they were the center of attention and frank was at the movie premiere and he's still reaching out to people and right. giving them. everybody's got a picture of frank at the at the open what, what right. star takes a picture with everybody that attended right not many. everybody that attended that event i don't think missed the picture opportunity with frank so again we're going to miss Frank. We're going to miss him at our next event. We're going to miss him in our lives, but he's in our hearts and we will keep him alive. The movie will keep him alive. The book will keep him alive. And again, yeah, it's all about love with Frank. It's all about love. Yeah. You know, when first, when we first got together and back in 2016, I was never used to anybody opening the door for me because I'm a small town. Like I just independent. Don't I'll get the door myself. But, and so that was a big no-no with Frank. If, if, if I went to go open the door before he could do it for me, he's like, Steph, if you touch that door, I'm going to break your arm. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, no, I can get the door myself. Like, I don't need you to open it. He's like, any true gentleman will always open a door for a lady. And you, you didn't touch the door. From there on out, I'm okay, but what? Sure. Okay. And and that's just, again, he was a true gentleman, a true soul. And, 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 and yeah. Just, that's great. Tamara, can I say something that my husband reminded me of this morning? I sure. love her story. I love Steph's story. <laughs> um, this morning, we were talking, I was getting out of bed to come and do this and telling him what I was doing. And he laughed and he said, remember what you told Chase before the Make-A-Wish people came? And I got right down to her and I told her, I said, don't wish for a puppy. We can get you a puppy. <laughs> I said, it's bigger. It's something much bigger than that. Something mom and dad can't do for you. Think big. And I think that that's, I mean, how phenomenal that he realized that, that these families, they've not just suffered losses and trauma they've suffered financial devastation too because it takes so much out of a family and so to have a wish that can be granted to a child i mean there's nothing more magical than that to these children that are these are phenomenal children that have been through so much and this necklace that i'm wearing is totally in honor of chase of, of frank um it says we rise when we lift others and ex that's exactly what frank embodied he to the very, very last, every person that met him would say he did that, that he, he rose and we think so highly of him because he lifted others. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's part of what, what I remember most because several years ago I had, uh, Tamara and I always talk about, you know, two, three years ago, that was our first event that we ever went to ever in our lives mm -hmm. was that and summit with David Fagan and um, uh, with Allison and our nonprofit was being honored uh, that day. And, um, and then, Fra and Frank was there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what I put on David, uh, 
Corbin's page was, you know, Frank, you were my first legend. And and when I talked to him, I was like, well, I'm, I'm thinking about starting a radio show. And he's like, well, how about it? And, and I can be your first guest. And he's like, well, what do you think? I'm like, well, how about it? And I'm like, well, how about it, Frank? That'd be great. And um, first radio show guest. And then he was like, wait, after the show, he's like, you said this was your first radio show. It's like, yeah. He's like, that was a fantastic interview. That was like really, really good. Are you sure this was your first one? He was <laughs> always lifting, always lifting. And then I did movie premiere, uh, red carpet uh, movie premiere uh, here in Phoenix because he's from Prescott. So we had uh, Prescott, sorry. Um, so many people that came down and then I was in Hollywood with him and just all a, a number of other events. And, uh, and I would, um, I would text him and call him uh, every time we would go up to Prescott because it's only, I think, an hour and a half from us here in Arizona. And um, I'm like, hey, Frank, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at the lake, you know, over, over here by you or, hey, what you doing? And, you know, we would chat and stuff. And I just call him my Prescott buddy and my cowboy hat buddy because my dad and I always wore cowboy hats. And when my dad passed, I didn't have another cowboy hat buddy. So he, uh, he became my cowboy hat buddy. And um, when I heard that he was he he was not feeling well, he had put either comments or or love hearts on my page because I had COVID and I had double pneumonia, right. and I was posting um, every few days. And and Frank was one of the ones who was checking on me. And I'm like, you're checking on me. I'm now finding out you're checking on me while you're feeling pain every single day. I'm like, really, Frank? Like, I need to wear your hat one more time. We need to have, you know, a, a few good times one more time. You're only an hour and a half away from me. And um, when I heard it, that he had passed, it wasn't the same day. It was a few days later. And God sends things to me. And I said, I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you, hero. And then this whole song just came. And um, I do want to try to share it. It'll come through the shared screen. But um, my dad was my hero. And Frank reminded me so much of my dad. The words applied to both of them. But it came to me just two days ago because of Frank. So can I try to share it? Oh yes, please do. Yes, we're. I wanna. We'll we'll figure out a way so that we can hear it too. So if you can't hear it, you can you can message me. Um, but it is on YouTube. I can send you the link. If you want to send me the link, then we can do it that way. We'll do it that okay. way. You want you want to do it with the YouTube link? Yeah. Why don't we do that? And in the meantime, send me the link through the private chat here and. I have, you were just mentioned Allison. Allison is traveling today. However, she did send um, a video and there's an additional one with Allison. So let's watch those two while okay. uh, we get it all set up. Okay, I just said. January 22nd, 2021, we lost a true American hero by the name of Frank Shankwitz. Frank was the creator and co-founder of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, an organization granting terminally ill children their wishes. Frank granted over 500,000 wishes to these children across the globe. He was very tall in stature, and now those great big wings are spreading over us with that wonderful love he had. We thank you, Frank, and are so grateful for you. I had the honor, privilege, and pleasure of interviewing Frank in 2018 at an event we both attended. And for this and so much more, I am truly blessed. Thank you, Frank, for being that service hero that we all have inside of us and for being that icon and lighting the way. We're gonna miss you. 
is Allison Larson. I just wanted to take a moment to moment pay tribute to my dear friend, my dear friend Frank. I've got the Frank, Red, Red Rock Mountain in the background. In the background. Uh, remind me of remind me all of the times that all the time me about riding me a highway in Arizona. highway in Arizona. So thankful that so thankful that I was able to get to know Frank. You know Frank, one of my board members, my board members, and I was able to sponsor the Wishman movie premiere in Phoenix, Arizona, and feature the cover of the National Peanut Speakers Guide. And the reason why the reason why I felt about helping it about helping Frank out to the world, story out to the world, helping him reach other people, and reach other people because his was his story his of a story of a true hero. Of a true hero. Not only, not <laughs> only Frank, did Frank so much, did so much to help that little help boy, that little boy who wanted to be like wanted to be like the people in Chip. To the one step to further, the one he, step realized, further he realized that there were more, people, were more people, people that needed wishes, that needed granted. wishes granted. And so he made and it. So possible. he made it. He saw a bigger he saw vision. A bigger vision. And he believed and in he it. Believed he loved in it. He so loved it. That so he much. Made it happen. He made it happen. And and he tribute to his wife, to his wife for her role in that as well. And that as well. So thankful for Frank. So thankful for Frank. A little rough around the edges. But he truly had a heart of gold. He will be missed, my friend. My friend. Larger than life, 
down to earth friend and oh how i'll miss this hero i guess that god had a different plan he was a cowboy hat wearing hero a larger than life down to earth friend and oh how i'll miss my wish man hero i guess that god had a different plan i'm gonna miss you i'm gonna miss you hero i'm gonna miss you i'm gonna miss you hero i'm gonna miss you i'm gonna miss you hero i'm gonna miss you i'm gonna miss you hero i'm gonna miss you i'm gonna miss you hero i'm gonna miss you i'm gonna miss you hero i'm gonna miss you I'm gonna miss you, hero. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna That was really nice. <laughs> how blessed! How blessed are we? Just these common folk who got to touch greatness, and we all have that same story. Did y'all have that moment in the movie when he actually, when you figured out why he wears his hat all the time, where you're like, "Oh man, I didn't really get that till just now." That aha moment. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, I, I do have to run. I have to jump off to a, a, a I got to first put my makeup on and look like I've not been crying all morning. Um, can, I don't know if you can see my screen. Um, does this play real quick? You guys see that? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm bringing it up. Yeah. Can you hear it? Yeah. So, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying our friendship. And so I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask some of my amazing friends. It literally takes about 15 minutes, but I've got Sharon Lecter said yes and Les Brown and Joe Theismann is in the book, and Emmanuel Kelly, who's a singer, and I don't remember watch the TV show Two Two Seven. Remember that? No, one? I don't. Oh, Marla Gibbs is in the book. Uh, it's it's been kind of cool. It's, it's and all it is, it's very sad. Both my kids. Oh, you have one, or you know? What's yeah, I, I was in I was in this one here. Who put this together? Um, my buddy Steve Samlitz. Give me yeah, just a minute. That's the publisher of all of this. He's okay. really yeah. young, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, and I've known Steve. We've been good friends here. Oh. We've smoked cigars together. And I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> All right, but I like this idea that I'm going to do it as a recording and then give it back to you. you know, either I can send it in to him and he can send it back to you to tweet. You've obviously got your bio, and I know you got lots of headshots. <clears throat> I, don't know, I have a shot wearing that same hat. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I've been so yeah, lucky about that. Well, let's, so let's talk about this. So number one, um, what title do you like in your name? So what I'll do is I'll make that available. Uh, I've never shared it anywhere. So I will put that whole interview and give you, Tamara, the link uh, in a couple of days. I'll let it all settle. It's a beautiful interview. Uh, I turned to his chapter in the book, and, and I just lost it. Steve didn't make the names alphabetical, so they're always hard to find. Um, shoot. But he, oh, Frank's chapter starts out with turn negatives into positives. You know, when I was 10 years old, when Juan Delgado, my mentor, taught me an important lesson in life. I live in a small town of Seligman, Arizona, population 500 in the mid-1950s. We were so poor, poor people in the town were helping us. When I started the seventh grade, my mother left me again. She said, you're on your own. I went to Juan and said, I don't know what to do. He said, again, learn to turn those negatives into positives. I said, what do you mean? I think I said, I, what, what do you mean? My mother just left me. Juan said, Juan was teaching me, no matter what your circumstances, always turn the negatives into positives. 
And he said, I've arranged for you to live with the widow Sanchez. And he tells this very, very beautiful story of the habit of, so when you've got a great idea, it's up to you to share it. People will always say, oh, I've never heard of this. It's not going to work. Find the ways to turn it into a, a negative, into a positive. Do not give up on your mission when you've got something to say. And no matter with your great idea, no matter what others say, you've got an idea, stick to it, make it work. And Frank, uh, baby, you will be missed. You'll be in my heart forever. I, I was listening to Renee and Allison, and they all said something very eloquent, and I came on here and just blubbered about uh, – is that sometimes what happens when your heart is so full and looking at all your faces and we all knew him and I feel like I'm with the cool kids. Um, thank you, Tamara, for doing this. I needed this. I got on my live and just couldn't stop crying. What a great world that we live in right now where we can touch each other. I talked to uh, Eric Swanson. He's the one who called me or actually just texted me. Damn, don't text somebody that somebody died. I just, I hate that. That's just, it's like you get there. You're like, really? Uh, and he said he was sitting in his room in the dark all day just thinking about Frank. Mm -hmm. And then we both jumped on Clubhouse and we talked. So for I know that what you just did for Crystal and Tamara and everybody here, thank you for healing is about communication. So I appreciate you. I'll give you the link and uh, thank you. that's it. Thank you for, for coming and sharing your heart and sharing it so authentically it was beautiful and it you know it we need to blubber sometimes it's okay because you know we're here celebrating his life giving him tribute and also the fact that we all loved him so much that's what's creating some of the tears i have a question for you guys i'm not very much watching the news lately did his passing make the news like larry king's did i don't know I don't yeah. think so. um, I, I mean, I wrote out a statement for everybody. I mean, the media has contacted me and, and Kitty and Kitty's got enough going on. And she just said, Steph, please take care of this. And, and so I did. And I, I just sent a statement to the media. Um, and I know like Fox and Phoenix, um, they TMZ. Um, I think they're doing a little thing for them, but we're given, I mean, any stuff that they need or want, I mean, they can go off the website and get it, or they obviously contact me. Or No, I think it's just that about who we tend to focus on, you know, politically, we've been focusing on whatever the media wants to shine the light on, good, bad, or indifferent. This is a man who touched dying children's families around the world. Around the world. Around the world. Around the world. I know that. Millions. And it just, I would like everyone, I mean, all the kids and all the families just to kind of have that one moment where we're like, thank you. You did what Mother Teresa, what Gandhi, what Martin Luther King, you did it in a way. And right. this man's life should be celebrated every year. Well, we are going to do a celebration of his life. Um, we're, nothing's pinned down yet, um, but we're, we're thinking around his birthday. Anything you need from me, let me know. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm right here, an hour and a half away. I will, I promise. Everybody will know. Yes. I'm going to go with Kitty in a couple of weeks. So once things kind of cool, you know, kind of go through things and, and help her out with things that, you know, Frank did it all. So there's a lot of things that she doesn't understand or get. And I'm just going to be there to help and support. And she knows I'm here. I talk mm -hmm. to her every day. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. No, and the last thing that I think it leaves us with is many of us played this exercise throughout the years where we have a moment where we write our own memorials. And when you write that moment, because there is seems to be an expiration date on everybody's head, just like milk, no matter how good you are and sweet you are. And so for a moment, maybe we all stop and think going, wow, what will the group here and around the world say about us the day after we leave the planet? And that's yeah. that's that line in the song that I said we we think that our heroes will always walk you know among us you know we think that they're just always going to be around we don't we don't know especially now with COVID and, and cancer and other things like we don't even know when our car accidents you know everything starts with C I guess but we don't even know when our last day is going to be and um, just to kind of find out abruptly and then he's gone a couple of days later that that was just so so hard so hard. Oh, well, you know, I lost my dear Dexter. I raised a young man from South Central for 12 years. He was murdered. That was a crappy morning. My De my Joshua lost his dad when he was two to a car wreck. He lost his dad, his stepdad when he was 15 to a car wreck. There is no warning. 
But what you do get to do is realize the moments that you have here are incredibly precious. I almost lost Joshua on January 2nd. He yes. was hit by a car on his motorcycle. Yeah. You know, it's some days I live in so much gratitude, I can't move. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Every day you wake up. And that's one of the things I will say here within the Tour of Love and within our Buddies Network that we every day celebrate with humor, hope, heart, hugs, and a whole lot of love because we know how precious life is. We don't take it for granted. We absolutely love it. Love it with a huge amount of love. That's why this name of the show is Tour of Love rather than anything having to do with the organization that it supports because we are raising the frequency of the world through love and all of us right here are sharing that's exactly what frank did that's exactly what he was all about he was all about sharing the love with that little boy and he did his round boy windshake and he tore, you know he made sure that he, he caught the, the 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 proper escort to then be given the proper burial and then he made a decision that others needed it to. They needed the love. And that's exactly one kid after another after another. And it created a worldwide movement of over 500,000 people that have now received the, the wish. And again, you multiply that out by the families. We're talking millions that were affected and the love was shared because of one man, one man's legacy that we are all celebrating today. Uh, the first of many, and there will be an appropriate at some point when it is said, there will be a celebration that we will all be there and saying, thank you, thank you for being the wish man. Yeah, and, so, um Forbes and I have some of the same same personality traits. And now that she's mentioned that about, you know, Larry King versus Frank Shankwitz, I'm like, right, I don't think I've seen anything on the national news and everything. So now I'm kind of ticked off, you know? I'm so, I'm so well, we're, we're, right. you know what? At least you started it. And then let's, you know, let's make sure that let's, let's get that out there. Let's get that out there. Let's make sure that his legacy is heard because hey you got a lot of people that like to talk here so <laughs> you know uh so whatever kind of assistance is needed to help make that happen Steph, let you know let everyone know because you got a lot of people that yeah, will no yeah i know make that happen. happy blessed sunday thank you so much for having this outlet i feel better I, and i know everybody watching probably does too it takes a lot to do this i appreciate all of you guys be in touch uh thank whatever you, you and Crystal, I love you guys. I really do. I just, I didn't have a lot of family growing up. When I say I love you like family, it's not a joke. This is my family. Otherwise, it who is. else is there? So. This is. This is. Thank you. Barbs. Bye. We have a couple more clips I want to make sure that we do get in that they sent them and they wanted to honor. Here is one on an international level that sent in her thoughts. Hello, my name is Caroline Opinde. I am the founder of the NGO Whisperer. We are a consulting business that provides technical support to nonprofits so they can successfully impact people's lives. I wish to express our deepest condolences to the family of Frank Shankwitz, his wife, his daughters, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and the entire community and people who have worked with him in the past and throughout his life until his passing. While I haven't had the pleasure and the privilege of meeting Frank, people that I have worked with and continue to work with have been beneficiaries of the work that Frank does. My good friend Tamara L. Hunter, the founder of Chemo Bodies for Life, an organization that works with people living with cancer, worked closely with Frank and shared with me 
how great a mentor Frank was to her. Another one of my clients, almost a decade ago, was a beneficiary of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. When he was diagnosed with cancer and was critically ill, he was granted a wish and that changed his life. So together with the NGO Whisperer community of nonprofits around the world, our consultants and collaborators, we send our deepest condolences to the family of Frank. Indeed, a hero has fallen, but he has left us his legacy, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, to make a difference in people's lives. Here at the NGO Westboro, our ultimate goal is impacting lives. And that is why Frank's passing on had so much because of the impact that he made and will continue to make even when he's not here with us. Our prayers and thoughts are with his immediate family, the Make-A-Wish Foundation community, and all the beneficiaries around the world, people who have worked directly with him or benefited directly from his efforts and his life-changing work. May the Lord grant you grace, peace, comfort, and strength during this difficult time as we grieve his loss. Keep on impacting lives. May his legacy live on. Hey everybody. Shoot, I was hoping to do this without crying. Um, I just wanted to ever let everybody know that a really good friend of ours, uh, Frank Shankwitz, he's the founder of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I just got the news that um, he passed away. Um, he had gotten cancer of the esophagus and um, just announced it five days ago. And he's such a beautiful, beautiful man. And um, it's so funny how, you know, we really should follow our intuition. I've been thinking about him all week. Um, and I think about him all the time because he's just really funny and really an amazing man. And um, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, as you know, is an amazing, an amazing group. They've helped millions of kids um, all over the world have their last wish. And, you know, he, he was part of that first group that um, made the wish come true for the first kid who um, then after that they're like wow if we could do this for this little boy you know couldn't we do this all over the world for every other children and uh, they made a movie about him in 2019 it was uh, uh, released and uh, Ken Rashawn and I went out to the premiere and and were the photo were some of the photographers there and uh, we have a keep smiling book um with frank you know that he co-authored and i interviewed him for that so what a beautiful opportunity for me to have done that and he was such a really really good friend we had so much fun with him i wore his hat we'd play we'd laugh we'd giggle he just was always full of hugs and love and his wife kitty she's just so amazing and um um so for those of you who knew Frank or those of you who know about the Make-A-Wish Foundation or benefited because of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, I'm, I wanted you to know that, um, that he has passed and that he was just an amazing, amazing man. And if you have a chance, rent the movie Wish Man, Wish Man, um, I believe it's on Netflix. Um, it's a beautiful movie and it tells his backstory of the things that he went through and the troubles and trials and tribulations of him as a kid and as a young man. And, um, and please know that he, he just was an absolute blessed soul. So, um, love so much to his family and his grandchildren and, um, Luckily, um, I was driving and Ken called and told me to pull over and to make sure I was sitting down and um, and told me Frank had passed. So um, so those of you who have a chance, 
go watch, watch Wish Man. You'll be really, really blessed to know his story. It's a really good movie, too. And uh, all of our friends are in it. <laughs> so uh, please go and watch that and lift yourself up. And, um, um, you know, think of a kid today whose uh, life has changed because of a Make-A-Wish Foundation. And by the way, those kids, not all those kids pass. There's kids who are now living in an adulthood who are doing amazing, amazing things that are so blessed. Um, in fact, I was uh, very honored to be at a Habitude Warrior Conference where I was speaking. And I ran into this young man named Tim Connor, um, who's blind, and he was a Make-A-Wish recipient. And the funny thing about uh, Tim Connor is that... Um, he, I knew him. He and I had met because I had spoke at a college and um, he was, I, he came up and talked to me afterwards um, when I had presented in New York. And so here we all were together. And when he found out Frank was there and that he was, you know, the founder of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, uh, he was just so elated and so thrilled and so pleased with uh, his wish coming true. So um, anyhow, so thank you guys for listening and being part of it. And again, go watch Wish Man. Help me uh, remember this amazing man and all the wonderful things he does. And the next time you have an opportunity to, you know, think about um, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, please think Blessed Thoughts because it was created for the most amazing thing. And um, uh, we have a book um, of, of Frank's that we did in, for the Keep Smiling movement. And uh um, I'm going to talk to Ken tonight where we need to do something more now uh, with his book and his story because he's so uh, absolutely amazing. And the people that Ken and I are around that change people's lives are just phenomenal. We're so blessed to be around such phenomenal, phenomenal people. So again, um, best, best love to Miss Kitty, his wife. Uh, she's just an amazing woman and love to Frank's family and friends and all of us that are celebrating this amazing man's life. So thank you all for being here. And um, uh, I'll be heading home tomorrow uh, from Baltimore uh, back to Ohio. And uh, um, so anyhow, thank you guys so much for helping me share Frank Shankwitz with all of you and, and letting you know um, how much he meant to me. So thank you. Bless to all of you. Bye. So as we prepare to close, everyone can be a hero. And in Andrea Adams Miller, we all and love her. She shows up everywhere. And what a way to be able to share at the very end as we start to close this up about the Wishman movie. And we all have that hero inside of us. Go and watch the Wishman movie and find out more about the story of Frank. What would everybody like to say in closing? And I know, Richard, we didn't get a really to talk to you much. However, thank you for coming. And I'd like to be able to start with you, give you an opportunity to share. Sure. And awesome being here. Thanks for organizing this, Tamara. And um, yeah, my, my basic thoughts are, again, we're all feeling grief, but the, the beauty and the essence of a person of Frank's magnitude is his spirit will live on in each of us. So we all came together based on his spirit bringing us together, and then that spirit will continue. So I have no doubt that we will continue to bring the love that he brought into our lives, into the world. His good works will be manifested through us. And that's the beauty of creating a relationship with someone because it's not just them. It's not just in this world. You know, there's a, a world beyond us, again, no matter how you look at life. So his spirit will continue to resonate with us. And we will continue to talk about him, share his stories, recommend his movie. And again, we've all been touched with amazing experience that we shared here. And that's not going to stop. You know, that that's going to continue from day to day. We're going to continue to get together and say, hey, remember when? 
Remember back in 2020 with Frank. Remember back in 2017. Remember that time. And so now it's fresh, but we're going to start having more mm -hmm. recollection, especially when we start going through pictures. And, you know, that's, again, like I said, there's always the grief, but then I look at the celebration. You know, unfortunately, I've lost a lot of people in my life, so I'm learning to really focus on the celebration of their lives, um, the good things, and, and how they touched us and how they're still with us. Because again, there's no way he's going to leave Stephanie alone. He's going to be in her ear every day. <laughs> <laughs> so she's That's always going to have these. I mean, <laughs> she's always going to have these frank moments. You know, she's always going to have these frank moments, and so she's going to feel it. He's going to sense it, and you know, even something simple as the door. If a guy doesn't open the door for her, she'll be like, "Hey, Frank said." <laughs> for real. Yeah. So, so that's the beauty of someone of the magnitude and the relationship you have and we all collectively have. You know, it takes a special person to do that, to bring people together, to have a spirit that unites people. And again, we're from all over. We're from all different backgrounds, ages, shapes, sizes, cultures. So how does someone do that? They have a special spirit, they have a special soul, and it doesn't stop when their body's gone. You know, yeah, it's sad. You know, we can't pick up the phone, but we can still dial them up. We can still reach out to Frank and he'll definitely be in our hearts. So that's what I like to leave with. Again, he, he, he's physically he's gone and that is sad, but his spirit is going to keep us together. We all share that. We're going to share that till the end of time. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Carol, Carol, what would you like to share? What I want to share is just continue to have the humor, the hope, the heart, the love. And as, as Frank said, um, there's hope, there's dream, and there's a hero in everyone. Mm -hmm. So never give up. Remember, everyone is a hero, and we all have dreams, and we can all achieve them. Beautiful. Season. I was just thinking, as a Wish family, um, what a privilege it was that I got to meet the man who made our family a wish family. And um, that, you know, there's, I always used to say, there's a list of people that I'd want to meet in heaven. And Frank would have been on that list <laughs> that I could, could I could just grab his hands and thank him. And I got to do that while he was still here and got to know him. And I want to tell Stephanie to please tell Kitty that we all know that Frank would not be the man he was without her. That oh, yeah. he wouldn't, he wouldn't have met Chris without her and this uh, amazing foundation and the legacy that he left behind is because of her as well and so extend our arms to her and let her know that there's so many of us sending our love her way as well yeah and I wish will. families around the world who want to thank her too yeah i will i promise yeah. thank you thank you crystal Yeah, um, oh. I've just been crying and crying and, and it was it was hard to to do the song because I, I kept crying and um, but I wanted to get it out. Uh, I had to get that out for Frank. And uh, I. Uh, just think about you know all the all the greats that we that we've lost lately, you know Bernie and uh, Ryan. Like there's you know a number of people, and I just yeah. I sat on the stairs and cried, you know, about him because he he launched his book on my show. He was so so excited, and you know we've had a number of conversations, and I and and. The same with Frank, like he's just so, so approachable as, as a legend, you know, to have him in my life. I'm never, ever, ever going to forget it, ever. Because he, he, he's truly my cowboy hat buddy. And I just, I still can't really talk right now. I'm supposed to have a photo shoot in 45 minutes. My eyes are all puffy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to smile. But um, um, I wanted to try to get on here, Tamara. So thank you for making this possible. Thanks for letting me know. Um, I'm glad I was able to get that out, uh, to be able to share that with the world. And um, my prayers have been you know, for Kitty and, and the family and 
just her beautiful smile too. And, and all that she is and the spunk that she has, you know, I just really, really appreciate her being in my life as well. Thank you. Stephanie. Oh gosh. Um, I was actually just looking through um, <laughs> Um, my last, well, not, I mean, obviously we message, we message all the time, but here's one that I thought I was, I thought it was kind of cute and kind of funny. And it was one of our last conversations. Um, I checked in on him obviously every day. This was, uh, January, um, January 12th. I said, Hey boss, checking on you doing any better. I said, what's the weather like there? He said, still have a pulse. Um, sunny and 50. Still have, a, still have a pulse. I'm like, oh, that's great. Um, he said, sunny and 50s, daytime and lows 20s at night. Not doing well. Home and bedridden. Can't even go to the front porch. Super embarrassing yesterday. Been taking whirlpool baths to keep the circulation going. Got in the tub and couldn't get out. Kitty had to call the fire department. To lift me out. <laughs> After getting some shorts on me, luckily I knew a couple of the guys so we could laugh about it. He's like, I was never so embarrassed. Um, still waiting on results. Um, love you, mean it. And then he said, on the top of that, I just received three speaking gig requests for May and July. I need to get back on the horse, Stephanie. So, I guess we all need to get back on the horse and yeah, I mean, continue his legacy as, as I will always honor that. And, and, you know, prior to him, this was just talked about a couple of weeks ago. There was a couple of things. In, um, oh, there was a couple of things in the works and, and that that's something we can talk about, you know, later on. Um, but he, uh, we had started talking about doing another, started another nonprofit called After the Wish. And we bought the domain. And, and I really want to start and continue that. And I promised him that I would, I would do that. And he wanted me to run it. And, and I'm like, boss, I can't. You know, I have my own business. I'm a private detective. And this is your fault. And, um, you know, and, and now I've, since then, since this, I, I really, I'm, I think I'm going to reach out and ask for help through my people and, and yeah. make this happen. And you don't have to ask for help. You need to just tell us what we need to do. Exactly. I'm You've got people well, that, know, I mean, that things, are here for you. Yes. When things slow down a little bit and I can you know, sit down and we can make this happen. And I, I know that that's what he wanted and that's what's going to happen. So I don't have a choice. He will haunt me. <laughs> um, Not only about I, doors I, then. Thank right? you so much for allowing this to, to happen. And I didn't think I'd be able to do this. And but it, I'm here. And, and he would tell me to get back on the horse and man up because we got stuff to do. So I appreciate it. And you guys know that I'm here if you need any anything or have questions or if you need photos of anything. I mean, I have, he's all me. 1091. So. Well, thank yeah, you. My, last message, my last message from him was there is uh, something I asked him, I think in November and he just apologized profusely. He's like, well, we definitely, I'll, we definitely, what did he say? We definitely have a rain check for that. Yeah, and that's my it really last. messed a lot of things up and a lot of plans that we had going on for just this last year. Even um, there yeah. was a TV series that was going to be getting made, um, and he needed angels, and I was one of his angels. He picked me to be one of his angels for the TV show. It was kind of like a an extreme home makeover type thing for heroes, um, mm -hmm. going to hometowns that have been, you know, firemen or destroyed or you know, police officers' homes that were destroyed and and. I was honored and, and it was all wrote up and ready to go. We just, the COVID kind of could have put a goodbye. I know he's super excited about it. And yeah, you know, but 
I'm still his angel. I ain't going anywhere. And he, he's, he's my partner for life, and we're always going to be a team, and, and I'm here for everybody else as well. And thank you, everyone that's been a part of this, everyone that's contributed thoughts, everyone that has. We do have one person that was not recognized yet that did send in, and I, I do not want to at least not recognize her, and that is we have Tracy Swanson, who has um, a ranch, and it's the Heart Rock Ranch. Horses Helping Heroes Heal. And she met Frank and he became uh, one of her advisors for this project. And the bottom line is this, is that she wrote something very beautiful and we will attach it to this for him, very heartfelt because he absolutely made such a huge difference in her life in multiple different ways at multiple different times. And she, her heart is, is one of many that is sending love to Miss Kitty, as she says, Miss Kitty. And um, I would like to just also add to Tracy that our organization is sending the love to the family and to all of those that are out there that right now are, you know, have a Kleenex box. Yet, yes, we're ready to get back up on the horse. Got our hat right there, ready to do, ready to get it done because there are people that need us today. And that's the bottom line. That's the ones that come and serve because it's all about serving others. That's what his legacy truly was. He showed up. He showed up and he shared that we can too. And I believe in that. I 100% believe that we together can make a difference. And so, yes, Stephanie, we're here for you. Crystal, we're here for you. Richard, Carol, Susan, all of you that are out there, all of you that have been a part of it, Forbes, thank you for stopping by. Poe, thank you for being here. Michelle, all of you that have sent in your videos and clips, we all know you love them. Now it's all, it's time for us all to get back up on the horse and take that love and go out there and love others and be that domino effect that he shared with all of us that we can be, that we can make a difference with one person at a time, one child at a time, one right. adult at a time, one person at a time. And all of us collectively doing that will make a difference throughout the world like he has. We will too. So I want to say thank you, everyone, for being here and sharing the love on the tour of love. And thank you, most of all, to Frank Shankwitz and the family for being who they are. And Frank, thank you for being the wish man because you have definitely granted many, many wishes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tim. We'll be back next week. Bye.